Hi guys, I'm Ryan Newsman and welcome to my flight hunting channel. If you haven't already done so, consider hitting the subscribe button down below. Uh, that'll keep you up to date with everything as I upload it. Uh, my channel already contains hundreds of videos covering a wide range of both patterns and techniques from the basic to the more advanced. Uh, so without delay, let's get on with the show. Hi guys, uh, so another pipe play tonight. Uh, this time what we're going to tie is uh, sort of like a pink and white, pink and silver type uh, fly, uh, and pink and silver is a known colour for cold water. So uh, this is a Sakuma Manta Top Gun, and uh, it's a short shank hook. This one happens to be a 6.0, um, but to me it's probably equivalent to a normal sort of size 4.0 hook. So we're going to use our gel spun. Put on the gel spun and then glue that thread base and wrap back over itself. So crisscrossing the wraps that we had before till we get to the front. Then we're coming back through it. So all this is still wet glue. The idea here, it glues our thread base to the shank and we shouldn't get twisting of the fly. So relatively simple tying. What I'm going to use here is a Lure Flash uh, silver sort of mobile stuff. Uh, this comes in hanks that are what 20 centimeters long, maybe. So I'm going to pull a, a bunch out of that. Once I have my bunch, now there might be a, could be 20 fibers in that anyway. Uh, I'm going to take some of the fibers and pull them longer by a couple of inches and take a few more and pull them to sort of halfway that. So we end up with this tapered bunch, which I'm now going to set on and that's going to create the length of my flay, which is somewhere a little bit, say the halfway point is probably around about there, so we're an inch or two or say an inch that side of it. I'm going to then move forward and tie this remainder of the bunch further forward so we have about a centimeter or so here uh, so that when I pull this back then uh, we'll have a centimeter lost there and a centimeter lost there so that will misalign the tips and give us more of that sort of taper. Uh, so the body of the fly then I'm going to use a silver synthetic fiber silver coloured and as you can see I'm taking the bunches and I'm just throwing them back pulling little bits out of it misaligning it and I end up that way with a tapered bunch so tapered at each end I'm going to then set that in Measure it out till it's around about the same length as the tail there. This bit is pointing forward. Splay it around the hook. And then tighten up my thread into that. So several good tight wraps. This is then giving us the core shape. I'm going to take Super glue, and you see I've created a, a blob of super glue that has sort of joined the whole way around there. So that's going to get into the uh, the bases of these fibers. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take one of these big straws, and I'm just going to flip all back. So you can see that's folding back. Uh, our fibre, it's folding back our tinsel, everything and giving us this tapered shape back here. Once I get it folded back I'm just going to pinch it 
and that will flatten the sides in uh, but it won't flatten the tops down so that'll give us that little bit of height and depth to the fly uh, as you can see here so we now have that taper that bait fish profile so I'm then just going to take my tying thread forward of all of that and then I'm just going to hold all in place and I'm just going to set everything in the shape that I want it to be. So as I said I'm squeezing it into a flat bunch but if I can lift this up it gives me that little bit of height. If I want I can pull that down before it sets and the, the base angles will then give me that sort of uh, volume to the fly. So as you can see that would already work as just a plain silver a uh, little bait fish pattern. You could stick eyes on it as it is. You could choose a different colour of a head. As it is, I'm going to put a pink head on this. For that, I'm going to use this, which is a really good quality uh, pink craft fur. So I'm going to cut a good size bunch of that. I'm going to grab it across its middle and I'm going to get rid of this short stuff so I can brush that out, I can flick it out, I can whatever. I'm going to brush it out here and then I'm going to take that and I'm going to set it on here on the side and tighten that in so there's a little bit of it pointing backwards. I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to repeat the process on the other side with another bunch. Set that on, match up the bases. And then I'm just going to put a big half hitch or two into that. Cut off my thread. I'm just going to take this sort of mascara brush here and just give that a brush forward. That has separated all of the fibres out so that they're in line with where they're tied in essentially. And then I'm going to allow a blob of this super glue to create something here. And then I'll take my straw again and just flip everything back. Once it's flipped back, pull all back into line and then pinch and again you can see I'm pinching it in line in the vertical line with the of the fly that I've tied you'll feel it start to heat up a little bit and it'll give me a nice flat base for our eyes to be added on here so and then just Adding a bit more glue just to make sure that it has held the position I want it to. Keep checking it, see if there are any fibres that aren't controlled the way you want. And if there are, just give them a little tap. And that's it. So that base, that's the base of the fly there tied. Uh, it's time to put eyes on it. Uh, but again, as per usual, I'm going to let the super glue totally dry out before we do that so it doesn't discolor or interfere with our epoxy. So if we take a fly that we tied earlier. So again, you've seen me use these before, little posted pads and cocktail sticks for mixing our epoxy. Five minute epoxy. Put out a blob of that. And then we'll mix that with the cocktail stick. Round and round, over and over on itself till it just turns a little bit milky almost and then it'll change back again to a clear and we know that we're ready.
So, take a bit of our epoxy on our stick, create a little blob on that side, flip the fly over onto its side, do the same again. So this is just a bed for the eye to stick into. And I'm going to use like a blue pearl eye here. So I'm just going to set the back lip of the eye into the epoxy and that'll just help to secure it. Push it back. So you can see now the eyes are in position, so it's time to leave that aside to set. What I would say to do, because the five minute epoxy is once they're in the sort of position you want, leave it alone for maybe about four minutes and then there'll be a little bit just before it totally sets where you can then just go and pinch it uh, and get those get it all sitting in nice and neat without uh, having it displace. So we'll set that aside. And we're going to take one that we're already at this point with and we're going to finish the head. So these eyes here have been glued on and have dried in place and we're going to finish the head. So we can use just standard epoxy here. We can use the blood epoxy we were already using or what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little bit of uh, pink glitter to it. I've mixed the glitter in with it, mix it all around. Now just be aware that some glitters, if you are using glitters, uh, some of them will actually make the epoxy go off even faster, but that's not too common. So I'm just going to put that on. on the top of the head, get another little blob of it for underneath the head. So I'd probably take the head back, when I'm making the head I'm probably making it back three quarters of the way, the length of the uh, of the eye itself. At the front I just like to make sure that the epoxy from the bottom comes up around the front edge of the eye and just joins with the top part of the head and that uh, is our head done so as I said you can now rotate this uh, by vice by hand whatever suits yourself depends what you've got uh, or I'm gonna put this into a rotary fly dryer here and let it revolve away but what I'm going to do to do that is I'm going to put one of these clips on it and that'll stop these materials from flipping around and getting into the epoxy. Set that on, turn it on and that will dry itself. So um, hopefully you like what you've seen uh, and if you do give us a like, subscribe, tell your friends and until next time, tight lines. Thanks for watching.